It's obvious when it comes to track days, only a small group of people chooses Audi. Why is that? Why track days are full of BMWs and Porsches? Is it because Audi doesn't know how to make involving and exciting cars? I don't think so. The racing history of Audi dates back to the 20th century. They broke grand speed records with silver arrows. They changed whole motorsport, whole rallying in the Group B with quattros. <laughs> In DTM, they humiliated the best touring cars in the history of motorsport with a giant car like V8 DTM. In 1996, they won all seven touring championships around the world with B5 A4. And there is the unforgettable Le Mans Saga, 13 titles in 14 years. Audi even kicked out from almost every circuit-based championship they entered just because quattros were so fast. Despite all this heritage and success, automotive journalists rarely say good things about Audi's tracking or handling capabilities. The only word you hear from them is understeer, understeer, understeer alone. And I don't think they say this on purpose. There must be something really wrong about the car because almost every journalist say the same thing. Cars are tend to understeer. 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 I made some investigations to uncover the reason behind this. After countless articles, forum pages and Facebook groups I put together my theory. Car manufacturers are not spending billions of dollars on motorsport every year just for the sake of entertaining us. They do it purely for selling more cars. I'm sure you heard this phrase before. Win on Sunday, sell on Monday. This marketing approach used by many car manufacturers because a championship title means much more than thousands of television adverts. Winning a title is the purest form of saying we make better cars than others. Because there is only one spot, just one spot for the winner. Audi has been using this marketing strategy for decades. They did it first with Quattro in the Group B rally. They did it again in the United States by entering IMSA and Trans Am series. And actually they get banned again because Quattros were so fast and all-wheel drive was not allowed anymore. So Audis were out of competition because they were so fast. They banned from Super Touring too because again, Audi A4s with all Quattro all-wheel drive system was much faster than its rivals. Even at some point, Federation said you have to add some weight to your cars to even the competition. But that couldn't stop Audi from winning titles again. Eventually, they banned Quattro and Audi was out of competition again because Audi was so fast. My point is, Audi used motorsport remarkably to boost their brand value. Think about it for a second. A brand gets kicked out of competition because it was so fast. Is that a better way of marketing? Even their rivals said Audi had unfair advantage. <laughs> If Audi was a very successful and badass brand when it comes to motorsport, why these journalists or YouTubers or reviewers says Audi is not a good track car, Audi is not a good driver's car, or Audi is not a good handling car? Things get a little bit complicated right here. Audi is a brand of Volkswagen Group, so it's not an independent company like BMW or Benz. Being in a big group comes with some limitations. There are 12 brands under the Volkswagen roof, and every one of them has their own target market. Because if they target the same market, the whole group will suffer in sales. For example, Skoda and Porsche target totally different buyer profiles to reach every potential customer. Audi is no different. It has to know its place in the Volkswagen group. It doesn't matter that they gained all this legendary reputation through motorsport legacy. The only thing that matters is sales and sales only. So Audi can't aim the same market as Porsche or they can't make some parts exclusive to their own models because they have to share a significant portion of parts with the other brands in the group to keep production costs low. For example, an A3 is actually a Golf with a different brand, different face. An e-tron GT is a something like reshaped or rebranded Porsche Taycan or vice versa, Porsche Taycan is a rebranded e-tron GT. Even the mighty RS6 shares its engine with Bentleys. There's nothing wrong with that. But this whole process of keeping the costs low takes away the uniqueness of the Audi or the other brands in the group. So as you can see, Audi has much more restrictions than its rivals when it comes to deciding how their road car is going to be, how their performance model is going to be, because Audi is in a group and they can't make their decisions by themselves. They have to ask daddy company. 
the Volkswagen. Nein, 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 nein. But there is much less restrictions when it comes to Audi's motorsport department, the Audi Sport. Audi Sport can choose whatever engine or whatever body style or gearbox they want in their race car because they have to win races to sell road cars. So restrictions are much low for motorsport division. Also, it is much cheaper to build 50 race cars or 100 race cars a year than making millions of road cars with special parts. So as you can see, there is two Audi. The first one is the one that we see every day on the road. And the second one is a killer when it comes to motorsport. So because of that, the Audis that you see on the track in actual motorsport events are totally different than the ones you see in the street. I'm not trying to say other brands make race car and the road car exactly the same. If I squeeze all this into one sentence, Audi cannot reflect their motorsport experience into their road cars like BMW do. Because Audi is not an independent company. There is a leash around Audi's neck and it says Volkswagen on it. Mommy, you can see your whole life. <laughs> Leave a comment below if you have other opinions in this topic. And this was about Audi. So see you in the next one. Cheers.